Hello everybody! In this video we will demonstrate that the special relativity theory of Albert Einstein is wrong. And we will also show that uh, the Earth is surrounded by some sort of uh, media uh, for ether, uh, quantum, vacuum, whatever you want to call it, which are surrounding the Earth and following it in its path through the universe. Uh, to demonstrate this, we'll need some sort of reference, and uh, we will use a nice looking crystal for this purpose. A crystal is just a, a lump of uh, matter where we have well defined uh, atomic layers or uh, distance between the atoms are well defined, constant, let's say, and uh, so we'll choose a nice crystal. To uh, analyze this crystal, we need some sort of uh, probe, and we will use a photon probe in the X-ray domain and we will uh, um, irradiate the surface of the crystal by this uh, photon beam and we analyze the uh, reflected uh, photons. This type of reflection is called uh, Bragg's reflection or Bragg's diffraction and uh, this gives, uh, you can use the fact that the, an integral uh, wavelength should correspond to a distance between uh, the atoms in the layer or between the atoms. And when you analyze this, you can find uh, the distance between the atoms within the crystal. This can be done quite well, and you have some uh, relative error of 10 to minus 5, so you have a very well known distance between the atoms within the crystal. Um, you use X ray because this is uh, the photons which have the uh, wavelengths corresponding more or less to the distance between the atoms. This distance between atoms is quite uh, constant, I mean it's uh, uh, the same for all atoms more or less and uh, the distance or the size of an atom depends on the electronic structure around the nucleus and not on the uh, charge or the uh, mass of the nucleus. In fact uh, these uh, X-ray uh, photons it's called X-ray because of the uh, radiographic uh, plates you can take uh, when you go to a hospital, for instance, and uh, where you see the shadow of your bones on these photographic plates. And that depends, of course, uh, on the distance between the atoms. That in the case of the bone, the distance between the atoms are shorter than the wavelengths, so therefore the photons are absorbed or reflected backwards while in the soft tissue around, the distance between the atoms are bigger so that the photons penetrate much deeper and comes to the photographic plate behind. So, now we have a well-defined crystal. We will use this in the following step, which is uh, uh, that we now will irradiate the surface of the crystal with an electron beam. Uh, the electron beam should have the same wavelengths as before the X-ray photons. And to obtain this, we will look at the law of Louis de Broglie, which uh, presents the associated wave of the electron. So you have here the mass times uh, the speed times the wavelength is equal to a constant of Planck. From this, uh, you can then calculate the speed of the electron, which should be around 10 to the 6 meter per second. Uh, the size of the uh, atoms, and therefore also about the same, uh, the distance between the atoms, is around 10 to minus 10 meter. So if you put this in the formula, you obtain 10 to the 6 meter per second, approximately, of the electron we will need. We will do something very similar in the analysis of this, uh, and we can, as you see in the image, obtain a nice picture from the reflected electrons, now reflected from the electron clouds surrounding the nucleus, before the photons was reflected from the nucleus itself. So it is somewhat uh, worse uh, resolution, the precision is not so good, but sufficient for our needs. Uh, you should uh, also think that this image is very nice looking, it should be quadratic, and this in fact is the case. And this is interesting from the point of view that if you believe that the Earth has some velocity relative to some background 
uh, frame of reference, let's say uh, the cosmic background radiation, for instance. And then this relative speed is about one third of the of uh, the ten to six meters. So you should expect then in this case that you should have asymmetries in this type of pictures. Uh, you can turn around this exponential apparatus, muse different times, etc., whatever you like, and this uh, uh, pictures comes out always quite symmetric. So. Already from this, we can say that there is no relative speed between the Earth and some background reference frame. This is uh, already an important result. Well, as you know, uh, all kinds of um, experiment uh, agrees with the physical laws. And so this is true uh, on the surface of the Earth in the laboratories. And uh, since the law of physics should be the same uh, all over the universe, this should be valid also on the surface of any planet uh, in the universe. So a first thought uh, about this would be that maybe we have some sort of uh, media surrounding each planet, which could be a, a reference uh, frame for these experimental measurements. But uh, then uh, we have something called uh, the Special Relativity Theory uh, proposed by Albert Einstein which uh, says in two uh, fundamental postulates first that um, uh, all laws of physics should be the same uh, in uh, an uh, inertial reference frame and secondary that the speed of light should be constant and the same in any inertial reference frame. But this gives some problem with uh, the law of Louis de Broglie, so that the first um, uh, postulates of Einstein can be shown to be wrong. Let us now test this uh, hypothesis, and we will uh, do this by putting ourselves uh, on the top of the electron. Imagine that you become so small that you can ride on the top of the electron and you look around to see what you will see. In principle this should give the same result, but that is special relativity. Now we will see what really happens. If you are on top of the electron you look around and you see the laboratory or your crystal, your detector, etc. are moving towards you with uh, the speed corresponding to the, uh, the speed that the electron earlier had relative to the laboratory. But well, first of all, you notice that uh, if you are on top of the electron, the electron has a zero velocity. That is, he has no associated wave. Or in fact, he has an infinite associated wave. If you look to the formula, you find he has an infinite uh, associated wave, which is wavelength, which is, uh, of course, uh, wrong with you mean. He doesn't have any associated wave. But then, according to special relativity theory, then you should have uh, some wave coming from the uh, velocity of the crystal and the detector coming towards the electron. But this it cannot be correct because uh, if you use the same law as before, that is Louis de Broglie, you will find that the, since the mass of the atoms or the nucleus is uh, much heavier than the electron, the wavelengths of the uh, atoms or the nucleus is much smaller. <coughs> so it could not give the same pattern as was detected in the LED detector. So you say, well, the uh, electron is reflected from the electron clouds surrounding the nucleus. Okay, but the electron clouds surrounding the nucleus has a, a higher velocity than the electron relative to the laboratory and in from different from uh, according to the energy level they have. I mean, they have different velocities and different directions. So, so this could not give any specific pattern in the detector. This means that uh, if you are using the reference system of the electron, then uh, it doesn't work. You cannot have any pattern coming out from the uh, detector of low energy electron diffraction. Which means that the uh, relativity theory of Einstein is wrong. <coughs> And also we come to some other interesting result is that if it's only the reference system of the laboratory which gives the correct results, then you have to have some interaction between the electron 
and some sort of media surrounding the Earth. There is no other solution. And this is not only the electron associated wave of the electron which comes into question, but all velocities in any law of physics has to be uh, reference to uh, some specific frame, which in this case is a laboratory. So, which means that the uh, Earth has to have some sort of media surrounding it, and that it is the reference frame for all velocities surrounding, uh, open in any law of physics, in a laboratory on the surface of the Earth. So, of course, it is the center of the Earth that should be the reference point of, uh, to, uh, to consider. And also you have some other effect which has been proven already in 1925. Media around the Earth is not following the rotation of the Earth. That is, the media is a radial attracted to the Earth and not in the azimuthal sense. A reference frame is in fact uh, a question of the velocity between the object you are studying and some uh, frame of reference. We will give uh, an expression for uh, for a general uh, system of reference or frame of reference, and to do this we will use some uh, something some picture that you can help you, and we will use some spacecraft. Let's say spacecraft uh, traveling around in space. Um, how can you calculate his speed relative to the surrounding media? Or, if you want even more specific, how can you calculate the relative speed of some experiment using speed within the spacecraft itself? Well, we can give you a general expression of uh, some reference system. And to do this, first we have to have some uh, expression of the media surrounding a mass, whatever, we we'll use the Earth for instance. We believe that uh, such uh, uh, media should have a, a similar structure as, for instance, a gravitational field. And so we should have some uh, mass, uh, some divided by the distance square, and multiplied by some constant. This will give some sort of uh, force. If we can say that for a neutral, neutral force, I mean, well, it's a bit stretch. Okay. So, if you now look to the spacecraft, uh, what you have to do is you should sum up uh, this uh, media from all the surrounding bodies. And since they are moving, you have to multiply this by the speed of each uh, mass. And you obtain the formula that you see below. Now, you can, you should not forget uh, your own spacecraft in the case of you. If you want to, to have uh, an idea of uh, some experiment inside your spacecraft, for instance. So, in this uh, you sum it all up and you, uh, as you see, you can express the, uh, some sort of velocity uh, relative to the surrounding media. And um, especially you should notice that the constant of the media, which are given the strength in principle, whatever this is, disappears. That is uh, the velocity of the relative velocity between something and the surrounding local media. Uh, it's just a relation between the surrounding masses and the distance from uh, from them. So, to conclude uh, this video, we can say that we have demonstrated that the Earth is surrounded by some sort of media, which is the reference frames for all velocities and that this media is following the Earth in its path through the universe. And, of course, we have also demonstrated that special relativity is wrong.